Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me here on YouTube this morning. Dan. Dan here to talk to you about cook kits. Cook kits are a very personal thing. If you want to find something around the campfire to talk about when you're out backpacking, just take a look around at everybody's different stove and the different pots and combinations they brought, and you can easily spark a very long conversation and sometimes very passionate about what people consider the best cook kit. Some people like off-the-shelf cook kits where they can buy uh, an MSR something or a, or a GSI something, and they're very content with that, and that's fine. I started there. I had bought a cook kit. I think it was an MSR Halulite 3 cup soloist, I think is what it was. And I tried it for a while and it was okay, but as I saw what other people had and the combinations they came up with and why they had those combinations, my kit began to evolve. And within the last year, it's changed pretty significantly to the cook kit I'm going to show you this morning. Now, the basis, the thoughts around a lot of the pieces in this cook kit actually come from from a few videos I've seen on YouTube and from what I've learned on the trail. But how it all came together was really attributed to Sean Emery, or Shug as he's known. He is a Minnesota backpacker, and he has a video where he goes through his personal cook kit. And when I saw the pieces in his personal cook kit and thought about the pieces I had and the pieces I would need and what it would weigh and how it would all come together, I had to go after it. So. I've been using the same cook kit for about a year now. I've been extremely satisfied with it, both in weight and versatility, what I can do, what I can cook, and what options I can make depending on the trip. So I'm gonna show you that cook kit. Maybe it'll help some of you try to get your personal cook kit together, make all the pieces come together so that when you're on the trail, you can cook the way you wanna cook. Because it's all about doing it the way you wanna do it. That's important. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So how much does the kit itself weigh? Let's find out. 10.7 ounces, all in. I'd say that's pretty good. So let's take a look at what's in this kit. Remember it was 10.7 ounces with the stuff sack. This is everything that was inside the stuff sack, except for I've taken out the two plastic bags that are in there, the scrubber and the washcloth. We'll get to that in a few seconds when we talk about how this all goes together. But let's get started. So, the first thing <clears throat> that I want to talk about is this pot. This is an Amusa 12 centimeter mug, it's called. You can get it online uh, from Amazon, just about anywhere. They're really inexpensive, 3.65 ounces. When I weigh it, 3.65 ounces, which is incredibly light for something that can hold five cups of water. So you could buy a titanium pot and probably cut that weight in about half, but at five cups, five cups to the rim, four cups takes you right inside there, just below the top rivet, so you have plenty of room for margin. And this little guy does weigh 3.65, 3.65 ounces. Great pot. Uh, some people like to smush up the handle I don't because I'm afraid I'll screw up the rivet and it'll start leaking. But you can see it's been pretty well used. I spray painted it with black barbecue paint. Uh, there are some schools of thought that think that the black paint helps it absorb a little more heat. I found that it, it works pretty well. Uh, it also makes the pot look pretty uniform. So that's the pot. This is the lid for the pot. This is made by Mini Bowl Design. Tinny at Mini Bowl Design makes these. Um, you can actually order the 12 centimeter pot with the lid from Tinny. Fits on there real well, as you can see. Nice fit all the way around. It's recessed in there. And because you're only filling this pot for four cups just below the rivet, it's not touching the lid. The lid itself weighs 0.85 ounces, so it's not too bad. Fits right on there like that. These two guys have a cozy. Each of them has a cozy. The lid, right here, has his own cozy. I call it a top hat. And what I do is I take this, there's a hole in the middle, and I pop it right on top of that little button hook. And what that does is that reflects the heat down inside my pot. Then my pot has its own cozy. He slips down into, and that cozy goes all the way up to the rim of the pot. You can see there, all the way up. Put my lid on and I've got a nice closed package that will hydrate food, 
that will keep food warm. I've been real happy with how this works. So, lid with a top hat, pot with a cozy, boom, works real, real well. All right, so that's the pot, the main pot. Now I've got the secondary pot. Now I like carrying a small metal pot inside my main cooking pot. The reason is, sometimes if I wake up in the morning and I just wanna boil a couple cups of water, this is a great little pot to use for that. It'll hold 17 ounces. It's the Tokes 550 milliliter pot without handles. I have no handles on this, you can order it that way. It comes with its own lid, fits on there real nicely. And like I said, it'll hold 17 ounces. It weighs 2.35 pounds. <laughs> How about 2.35 ounces? It weighs 2.35 ounces and very, very light. I put the silicone lip guard on there because I don't want to burn my lips. And he has a cozy, which is made out of the bottom of a Gossamer Gear eighth inch sleeping pad. I tried to use the Reflectix cozy material and it just was too bulky. This works real well. Keeps the drink nice and warm. This just slides right down in there like that. Boom. He's good to go. This then slides down in my pot. So I've got my main cooking pot here with his Reflectix. This is Reflectix. You can get that at Home Depot. There's plenty of videos online that tell you how to make a cozy like this. My main lid, my drinking pot, or my uh, coffee pot, if you will. It's got a lid. Now we get to my spoon. This is a kid's Light My Fire Lexan spoon. Spoon on one side, fork on the other. You know, people laugh at me sometimes around the campfire with this, but I tell you what, it's 0.3 ounces, and I'm not in a hurry when I'm out camping. I'm not trying to shovel the food in my mouth as fast as I can, so I don't need a huge spoon. This works real well, and it's real compact for a fork-knife combination, or fork-spoon combination. Yeah. This is my stove. That right there is my Franken stove. It is a fancy feast stove with carbon felt wick and a small soda can that's been cut to fit. Now this concept comes from wood gas stoves I believe are the ones who make uh, the fancy feast with the fiberglass wick. Great stove, uh, 15 bucks, real cheap, but I wanted to make my own and what I found is that when I made this one it weighs half as much as the one I could buy in line. So he goes with me and the burn characteristics are about the same he will boil, this guy will boil um, three cups of water on one ounce of fuel in about 10 minutes. Not bad. And the great thing about it is you pour your fuel in there, then take your pot, boom, you put it right on there like that. No need to carry a pot stand. Take my lid, boom, and I'm cooking. Now, along with my stove, I also carry this little round vapor barrier that I put on the ground to protect the stove and keep it from getting cold. And a windscreen, of course, to go around the whole thing, upside down, for cooking. You gotta have a windscreen when you do an alcohol stove. Now, how does this all go together? Good question. First, you take the pot, you drop him down in his cozy. Then, you take your vapor barrier, drop that in the stove, windscreen, Drop that in the stove. Next comes your pot. Boom. Inside my pot goes my stove. And my stove goes in a little plastic bag. I like to keep it in there to kind of keep any alcohol from getting inside the pot. Twist him up. Boom. Down he goes. My washcloth and my scrubber, they go down inside that same inside pot, just like that. My lid, boom, goes in there on my inside pot, my outside pot lid, my top hat, boom. Now my spork goes in a little plastic bag like this and I try to keep it so where the fork end is facing the bottom of the bag, about the middle, so I can wrap it up like this and then I can twist down the ends and then all of this goes in my mesh sack. Like that. So I 
pretty tight mesh sack, so not a lot of room for error. Drop them in there like that. Bring that up. Round them like that. Spoon goes in the top just like this. Draw cord. Boom. There you have it. 10.7 ounces. A big pot for cooking lots of water and hydrating food with Cozy. An inner pot for making coffee or making hot drinks. Very light. Has its own Cozy. Stove, windscreen, and vapor barrier along with the spoon and a stuff sack. 10.7 ounces. Pretty good. Total cost of this kit, if you were to buy all the parts individually and make everything, somewhere between $65 and $90, depending on how much you pay for the Tokes pot and how much you pay for the spoon and things like that. But still a very good deal. And like I said, at 10.7 ounces, I don't mind carrying this all day long because I know that I'm going to be able to have a hot meal, a hot drink, very little fuss, very little muss. It's all bulletproof and pretty dependable. You know, after I made the video, I was sitting there thinking, and again, I want to emphasize, this is what works for me. Plenty of capacity to make hydrate food, make pasta, make drinks, really like it. But it may not work for you. So I encourage you, don't let something like this hold you back. Get yourself a basic pot and a cup, throw them in a backpack, and get out there. You know, the thing about backpacking is it's a journey. Not only is it a journey when you take the trip, but it's a journey as you develop your gear. You're going to try different things in gear. You may be a tent person today and a hammock person tomorrow. You may have an external frame pack today and an internal frame pack tomorrow. It's all going to be about your comfort level, your skill level, and how you put it together. So don't sell yourself short. A lot of the people you see in these videos who have been backpacking didn't start out as experts. They started out just like you and me. They got a backpack, they put some gear in it, and they went out and gave it a try. Hope to see you on the trail. Take care.